What's up everybody, my name is Scooch and welcome back to Dream Daddy. If you're just joining us, we got through our date with Hugo, where we had to save some penguins. Also, before you ask, I know I have like a mark right here on my nose, and it's because I got into a car accident yesterday. Don't worry, everyone's fine, the cars are fine, I just kind of headbutted the steering wheel, and that kind of sucked. Anyways, let's jump right back into the game, because we gotta go on a date with Roberto. I really don't want to. Robert is such a... He made things awkward since we banged. When the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy us all, you know it'll use the information against us, right? On a Friday night, you're most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. Have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? I trusted Giacomo. If you had to... <laughs> Hold on, you're making your mysterious background a little too obvious. If you had one thing to take with you onto a deserted island, what would it be? Gun. What are your turn-ons? Don't talk to me. What did you- You're making this account, Robert! What did you want to be when you grew up? Grifter. What's your favorite movie genre? Italian neorealism. What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. What do you never leave home without? At least four knives. I spent a lot of time thinking about- You ever really look into a rabid animal's eyes? What the- you made an account on Dadbook, and you're so aloof. Why are you aloof, Roberto? I'm trying to be your friend. Jeez. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on Dadbook. <clears throat> hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple of seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says that he read my message. I anxiously wait for a response. It's one of my thumbs. Watch cat videos on the internet. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to dad book and see, to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might as well make the best of my day. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. Food channel, because I like Mario Batali, I guess. Oh, meat hell is on. You have ten minutes to cook a five-course meal that must include these ingredients. Steak, lemon, lemon meringue pie, paper clips, and a ha- uh, what you You're gonna bake the paper clips into the pie? Or the ha- uh-huh. If you are unable to finish cooking, or if any of these ingredients are absent in the dish, we will release the wolves. Wow, that is hell. Oh my god. I'm not kidding. Please, help us. I lose several hours to whatever the hell was that, or whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef McDad to cook a gourmet delicacy. Am I gonna make chicken nuggets? I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Make a sandwich, microwave some eggs, mustard jar. Uh, make a sandwich. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The sandwich, a lost art. The standwich, a lost art. That's really funny. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. <laughs> Five second rule, right? No! Time out! How clean is your floors? I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back to where they belong. In my mouth. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more, bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that was hung off a door. That would hang off a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spent a couple more minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam. And welcome to the gym. Alright, I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And welcome to the jam! Yes, good. I like that song too. I pull up from the three point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. Yes, everyone else did too. Don't worry about it, Scooch McDad. No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something, space jam! <laughs> I managed to just barely defeat myself at a, at a horse before Amanda comes home. Then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning the house down. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi-glaze with creme fraiche, of course. 
Th th this is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Mm. Who's writing these TV shows? Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. After a few more episodes, Amanda goes to bed. I check my computer one last time. Still nothing from Robert. But it says he read my message. Is he ignoring me? Eventually, I climb into bed to get some rest. But I can't stop wondering why Robert won't message me back. Weird. I don't know. But I get it. Date complete. Did I get like a F? C. You didn't even reply, you dickass. Don't you ever say not Welcome. bad to me again. Oh, so now that I see he has a mysterious background, I want to know more about him. But I guess he doesn't want to talk to me. Cause we're banged. Does the game change if I didn't bang him? Oh, well, let's go back to Damien. Da da da! Already read all of this. Let's see how Damien's going. Maybe I could break something else in his backyard and forget to fix it. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. <laughs> I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Huh? No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment, folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, the dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing, rather than trying. One can, o one can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my, bold my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unseen, your companionship helped a great deal. Not only in the discipline of my child, but in the moral of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Scooch, if, you're, if you allowed me, it would mean the world to me if I can enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll, would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, D. Blood March. Oh my god! I love this man! Alright, Amanda and I both walk up, both look up from the letter. Hmm. Wow. He's good. Hmm. So, you gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on dad book and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop, my laptop shut. You have to write him back! A real letter! But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will, will you help me? I need to class this up. Hmm. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Hmm? Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classic. Yeah. Amanda and I hop onto my laptop and peruse showtimes. He doesn't seem to like rom he, he doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. No, oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the ennui of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Hmm. Nah, there's just a lot of blood and vampire titties. <laughs> Well, let's roll the dice. <laughs> I purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down at a table with Amanda to try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien, I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. Hey, good morrow to you on this fine eve. Ah, I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. Good one. What's next? Hey, remember when your son tried to cask of a Montalato, that kid? You been good? I must confess of my amateur control of this written word. Mm -hmm. Geez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Uh, you find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. To earn this shit was pretty messed up. <laughs> we're going with the top one. We're gonna go as Damien as we can. You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. Nice. Yeah. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. While a, while a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Like Brulel's landscape with the fall of Icarus, I found myself lost in your details. Let me, uh, get at that. <laughs> uh, I find myself enamored of the situation at hand. Bring it home, pops. 
Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. I would very much enjoy your company, accompanying me to the sim cinema. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Ooh, two and three both seem like they're the same thing. But this one is a misstep. Nobody wants to say company and accompanying. Ah, let's see that one. Smooth. Calling it the Simina is a classy move. In close, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes. Hard depths. Namaste. We'll carry on. Best wishes. And then I sign my name, my full name. Fancier that way. Scooch McDad. Ah. Is this okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. I must confess my amateur control of the written word as, as well as my even more amateur penmanship. Your letter found me in good spirits. Uh, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. With a strange turn of, while a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored at the situation at hand. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. And close you found two tickets to... But we all read this. Both to the lady and the best wishes. Excuse me, Dad. You spelled his name wrong. What? Huh? Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. And now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle. I knew this was coming. A lighter and a small piece of wood. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the, again, the, 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 and expertly presses the small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing, here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Awesome. Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is to deliver this to his doorstep now, huh? Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. I already called my guy. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> uh, all right, don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. <laughs> I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he... He had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night and the theater is kind of crowded, but still nice. How do you do? I jumped to the sound of his voice and turned around to see Damien right behind me. Was it the thunderstrike? Huh? You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. What, what, was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? Huh. I didn't hear anything. What? Huh. What? What? <sighs> Regardless, the hour grows close. Uh. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Uh. Please, allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks, and uh, as, we're ra <laughs> as we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh. My dad's here. Lucian, you I turn... It's a little too much, huh? I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Oh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, dad. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids' movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Huh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Oh my. You? Watching that? Y yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Ha! Hmm. <laughs> good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends and I look over to Damien. Good, good luck with that. Hmm. It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's, what's wrong. Huh. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping the armrest. Uh, vampires, huh? The movie hasn't even started yet. Is everything okay? Vampires, is everything okay? Everything is perfectly fine. Huh. I'm so, uh, excited for this film. I am a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. He's afraid of horror movies, isn't he? Do you have a favorite horror movie? Hmm. I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is, uh, Halloween Town. Terrifying. 
Oh, interesting. Huh. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. I could have sworn he was going to say, like, Nosferatu or something. It looks like he's about to rip them, rip the armrest off. Uh-oh. He's afraid. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? What? You must be joking. I love horror movies. The lights dim for the film. Ah! Damien screams. That was loud. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice, and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. Ah. The title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Mm. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and a well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Awaken, my coven. Two more vampires slide the tops off their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband. Yes, husband, but also, mortal enemy, it is time. The three look at each other, and then turn to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade! This rules. The trio of vampires flies off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in a movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. <sighs> we get a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It's good to finally blood you. Oh my. Romulus leaps out and slashes at the general's throat. Blood splatters all over everything, including the oh. camera. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping at my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. Oh, my. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Hmm. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. Huh. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got to an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out after, over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Tell a dad joke. Point out a plot hole. Ask what's happening. Hey! Open your eyes and look at that. Tell a dad joke, maybe? Tell a dad joke, because I'm trying to make him less scary. Tell a dad joke. Uh, where does a dog go when it loses its tail? What? Uh, where? To the retail store. Boo! I yell the last bit a little too loud for a crowded movie theater, but I can see a smile from form on Damien's face. Oh. Good one, Scooch. Mm. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie, where Romulus Bad Blood and the General's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out. Hard. What? The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. But then it's hard, it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Carmela, who watched the two from afar. Huh. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time be between the next Vampire Crusade 3. Evil must die again. More thunder, more ominous organs, the movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Uh. What an interesting film. While the premise admittingly struck me as, a pe as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Hmm. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk and the cool night air. Being, being alone with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? <laughs> as lovely as the company, yes. You gonna make me blush, Damien. He thinks I'm lovely. 
damn. Okay, here comes the smooth response. Time to get ready. Ow, I touched my face bruise. Thanks. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna say thanks. Hmm. Thanks. No. Problem. <laughs> Crushed it. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. Uh, are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Uh. Worry not, friend. I've a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery. What? Are we going in there? Hmm. A little bit of Victorian flavor, Scooch. Trust me. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest the small hill, we get to a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him for being in a cemetery. This is strangely romantic. Huh. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Is he a magician? How did I not notice a picnic, a picnic basket this whole time? Wait, where were you hiding that? Hmm. Hmm. Under my cloak? Oh, right. Damien unfolds the blanket and we both sit down. Gazing out at the city lights, he produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a, a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and find sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had, a, you had trouble handling a scary movie? Well, I... I wasn't... He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just have never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the con constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite all right. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Hmm. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Hmm. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. It's Robert! It's Robert! He said he likes grave robbing! What is that? Ugh. I'm not sure. Hmm. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer, moving faster. <sighs> Woof. Oh, it's a dog. No. Oh. It's a dog. As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Is that Brian? Oh. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. Is that Brian's dog? Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Uh. What a beautiful dog. No, Brian's dog is a little corgi, right? Hey, hey. We both look up, not expecting to see. Thanks. That's Robert's dog. I knew it was freaking Robert at first. Thanks. Uh -huh. Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Uh -huh. Hunting cryptids. Hmm. What? Hmm. What? Uh -huh. I, I didn't know you had a dog. Uh -huh. This isn't my dog. Mm -hmm. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her, and now we're walking around this graveyard together. Mm -hmm. Hunting cryptids. Mm. Damien and I share a look. <laughs> May I give her a treat? Mm. Sure. I wouldn't give her cheese, though. Uh. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and procures a small dog treat. How much does he have in that cloak? What else is he keeping in there? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Mm. Thanks. Hey. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Oh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his... His... Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness. Damien stares after them. 
I, I didn't know you liked dogs. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, um, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the gra- uh, leads us- Oh, sorry. And leads us out of the graveyard. Oh, jeez. As we begin to walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Scooch, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded, monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. I will use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. I can't wait to sneeze on this. I'm going to wave this at passing ships. I'm going to wave this at passing ships seems funny. I approve. Damien shuffles, to, shuffles his feet. I... Just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Uh, uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh? I unlock the door and step inside. Whoa. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Oh. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? Ah. No, I, I was just, uh... Okay, yes, how was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. <laughs> Told you. But as it turns out, Damien is scared. Oh. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep that in between me and Damien. Scary cool. Y y yep, he's so cool it's scary. Nice save, Scooch. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Mm -hmm. I think I'm misremembering that. Hmm. <laughs> wow, that's pretty punk. Uh, also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Hmm. Amanda's eyes narrow. Huh. I don't trust you, nor I you. Hmm. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? Ah. I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. All right. Whoa! Familiar I... with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. All right, and we are done with that date. Time to save. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, or do whatever you can to remind me that I'm awesome because I think that you're awesome and you have an awesome face and I hope you have an awesome day. Until the next episode, I will see you again.